hello again. As part of our online education success series, in this episode of the Explorations Learning Network, we'll be discussing rules and policies. Hi, I'm Avi Anderson, and this is the Explorations Learning Network. Most information about rules and policies for online classes are contained in what is often referred to as acceptable use policy. This statement, usually found in your online student portal, explains every important policy about taking an online class. In most cases, your school or online training provider will require you to electronically verify that you've read the acceptable use policy. Take the time to be familiar with all of the rules and policies outlined in this document. According to most education experts, like the wonderful people at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, the definition of academic integrity is taking responsibility for providing information on the source of the material that you submit in an assignment. You did the research, you interpreted it, and you wrote about it. Be sure to say it in your own words and give credit to the original source of the information. That seems like a normal thing, but what often happens is that some people feel overwhelmed with school. So overwhelmed, in fact, that they decide they need help. That's a good thing, as long as you do it the correct way. You can ask your instructor for help or find a tutor. You can watch video tutorials about writing a paper, completing a math problem, or even building a boat. Or even building a boat! <laughs> These are all legitimate ways of requesting help. However, there are some methods of help that are not legitimate. The most common way that students violate academic integrity is through the simple act of copy and paste. If you simply copy information and paste it in your assignment and act like it's your information, that's a problem. In academic circles like school, it's known as plagiarism. The problem with plagiarism is that you're essentially stealing someone else's thoughts. Stealing. See, what, see what's happening behind me? Okay. If you're doing the work, you should write about it in your own words. It's okay to read about something, interpret the information, and then write about it in your own words. That's called paraphrasing. Honestly, giving credit to the person who wrote the original work is the key to academic integrity. If you have an original idea and publish it in a book or on the internet, don't you want to be sure that everyone gives you credit for your information? So you should do the same. The key to avoiding plagiaristic actions requires two steps. Number one, paraphrase the material. In other words, write it in your own words. Wow, that was paraphrasing. Hmm. Here's a great example. Let's look at the sentence, the man jumped in the water. Simply put, send the same message using different words. Wow. I did it again. Such as, the dude dove into the lake. But that's not enough to avoid plagiarism. Step two, you also have to cite the source of the original material. In this case, me, Avi Anderson, on the Explorations Learning Network. According to Avi Anderson in episode 21 of the Explorations Learning Network podcast, <clears throat> the lad leapt into the pond. You avoid plagiarism by paraphrasing what I said and citing me as the source. Good job. 
There are other ways that students get in trouble by violating academic integrity. Some students take part in unauthorized collaboration. This often happens when another person writes your paper for you. Like all those times back in school when that bully would just keep coming up to me and having me write his paper for him all the time and then I have a C average and my parents thought I was doing bad in school the entire time he was succeeding and oh, <laughs> sorry. You can ask someone to edit your paper for mistakes, but you don't want them to write your paper or tell you what to write. In some cases, students pay other people to do their work. I never got any money. Don't ever pay someone to do your schoolwork. Depending on the situation, you could even go to jail. Remember, your work needs to be your thoughts and your words. Come on, you're smart, capable, and like Rob Schneider says, you can do it! That's a quotation, by the way. Another way to avoid plagiarism. Another way that students violate academic integrity is through cheating. They copy answers, submit work from a previous class, pay people to do their work, and use calculators to finish math problems that they should be doing on paper. Or even alter their grades or the due date of an assignment. Remember, the best way to succeed in school and avoid violating academic integrity is to take credit for work that is yours and give credit for ideas and information that you gathered from another source. In previous episodes, we've discussed the different ways that you'll be interacting with instructors and other students. Remember that you may be sending emails, chatting, texting, posting messages in online forums, or conferencing in video chat rooms with your peers, instructors, or even with education advisors, counselors, or academic mentors. How you communicate with these people affects how they perceive you and how well they share information with you. Your experience on the internet should be as stress-free as possible. Being nice to the people you communicate with helps to ensure that they'll be nice to you. This concept is referred to as netiquette. To learn more about netiquette, we're going to visit Albion.com, one of the oldest commercial services on the internet. Albion has operated a website on the internet since 1990, and throughout that time period, they have provided information on the proper way to successfully communicate on the internet. On the Albion website, you'll discover Virginia Shea's book, Netiquette, where she discusses the proper ways to behave while surfing on the internet. Most importantly, Anytime you Remember send a message. Remember that you're actually speaking to a person. Not to your computer, you big box of jelly beans. Ugh. Ms. Shea outlines 10 basic internet etiquette rules that we should all follow. <clears throat> Remember the human. Adhere to the same standards of behavior online that you follow in real life. Know where you are in cyberspace. Respect other people's time and bandwidth. Make yourself look good online. Share expert knowledge. Help keep flame wars under control. Respect other people's privacy. Don't abuse your power and be forgiving of other people's mistakes. We don't have time to go through all of these concepts in detail, so I suggest you visit Ms. Shea's information at this link here. Or research other sources of netiquette on your own. One of the topics mentioned by Ms. Shea in her discussions on netiquette is privacy. In education settings, this is often referred to as confidentiality. There may be times that you, your fellow students, or your teacher share information that should be kept in confidence. In fact, there are rules, policies, and laws that control the sharing of information. 
Most of us don't want people sharing our phone numbers with just anyone. Like when you're eating dinner and that telemarketer calls you and you got a mouthful of mashed potatoes and he wants to sell you something that you've never even heard of or really don't want, like six-toed socks or, okay, like back on track. However, in some online classes, the members of a learning team may decide to share phone numbers to conduct a conference call. Remember, you and your teammates shared this information with the understanding that it wouldn't be shared outside of the team. Don't share information if you don't feel comfortable sharing it. But remember that anything someone shares with you should be kept in confidence. So let's review. In this episode, we covered critical information regarding the rules and policies that are an important part of online education. We discussed acceptable use policies, academic integrity, including plagiarism, unauthorized collaboration, and cheating. We also talked about netiquette and confidentiality. It may seem like a lot to remember, but these rules are there for one basic reason, to make sure that you succeed in meeting your education goals. The Explorations Learning Network is a production of Clark College and is sponsored through generous donations and the support of students and faculty. Mark Gaither is our producer and director, and this episode was sponsored through a Department of Labor grant administered by the Washington State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. The Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board is a partnership of labor, business, and government dedicated to helping Washington residents obtain and succeed in family wage jobs while meeting employers' needs for skilled workers. I'm Aviance Anderson for the Explorations Learning Network, advancing learning for the information age.